are you going to do if, you know, if the work ever dries up or anything like that? I'm like, I'll just keep doing this somehow. I, I, I don't have a choice at this point. I don't know what else to do. <laughs>
But I had been a PA, I'd been an AC, I'd worked, I had worked on all these films, and I, so I was bored being a stand-in. I just kind of sit there. So I started helping the PAs, and I started helping the ACs when I could. I'd load or whatever, and I'd move, you know. And that's where that producer saw me. And he saw, thought, you know what, I'm gonna give him a shot. And it was just because I was working and taking, doing extra work on a set, so. And that's how I got my shot to be a casting director, and started from there. And, after that, mo that company closed, I moved to LA, and I thought I was just gonna be an actor. So I moved to LA to be an actor. Um, I was getting, out and getting some gigs as an actor job, and I thought, well, I'll just be an assistant out here. I'll send out some resumes and just be an assistant and, and cast, you know, assistant casting director, just pay my bills. My first movie I sent out, a, and uh, happened to be a producer that had worked loosely on some of the projects we'd have been here. And she called me up and she said, hey, um, I don't want you to be the assistant. I'm like, well, what do you want me to be? She's like, why don't you cast the thing? I'm like, well, what is it? Oh, Dennis Quaid's directing, TNT movie of the week. I'm like, oh, okay. So I got to work with Dennis Quaid and I uh, got to cast a TNT movie of the week in my first job in LA. That was so, it just, and I, I kind of started realizing at that point, I, I'm pretty good at this casting thing. So I kept going that way and then I got a job with a, a casting com a commercial, commercial casting company and we did all these big commercials. We did all the, like the swing dance gap commercials, the LL Cool J gap commercials. I got to do a lot of X Games stuff and we just kind of kept working and, uh, and, uh, and it just, then I'd get a job back here and I'd come back to Utah, work on a film and I'd go back to LA and I did a lot of back and forth and eventually I realized I was working more here than I was there and I moved back and that was 15, 20 years ago, so it's been great. As a casting director, you guide a big part of a production. Do you like the anonymity of being behind the scenes while still playing a big role in the production? I do. Yeah. I do. I, I, I'm, I don't, um, I like being able to guide and help. Um, we never have final say, but I like to be able to guide and help, and, and especially because it comes with actors, and I get to deal with actors and, and, and hopefully help, help actors that are really working hard and, and, and do that. I like that. I don't, I don't need to be you know, front and center. I realized that a long time ago. I like, I like just pushing it along. It's great. Yeah. What is your process for selecting roles for a production? Uh, I mean, you go from the very beginning, you get a script. Just like everybody else on a crew, we get a script and we, start, we break it out for character. Like basically what characters we're casting and, um, and we have conversations with, hopefully with the director and the producers about what they're looking for a feel. Um, then we send out, we put that in words basically in our little breakdown and we send that out, you know, and it's pretty much, you know, send it out to agents and, and the actors we know and say, hey, if you're, you're available during these dates and if you're interested, please submit for these roles. And they send us a headshot and resume and we start going through those. Um, and basically looking at who's right and who we feel, you know, and of course we have lists that we've already thought of and we've already got people, you know, in our minds, but again, it's a process. It, it, casting's like an art form like anything else where you just, you're, you're trying to find the right person to play that role. And sometimes you'd be surprised who it is. So you start reading them, you actually have sessions and start reading these people, start seeing them working through the process of acting, um, getting tapes in from them if they're out of state, you know, things like that, and just kind of going through the process of watching actors and, uh, and finding the actors that have the right feel for it. It's almost a feel. It's not even a, yeah, you know who the good actors are, but it's almost a feel. There are certain people who have a different feel for different roles and, and how they play it. So that's kind of the process. How big of a factor does your gut play when choosing someone for a role? A lot of times it's boiled down and we've got really, you know, we've got 15, 20 really good actors and we like it and I have to, really take in consideration the role and the conversations I've had with the director and, and basically um, take in consideration of who feels the best for it. Because you're getting down to the, the, the top actors in the state at that point and, or the top actors in the world sometimes, depending on what you're casting. And uh, you're, you're basically, it's who's got the right feel for it before I make my recommendations, before I recommend to the director, hey, these are my top five. And it really does. It's usually not about acting at that point. It's usually about the feel. Who has the best feel for the role? Are you always on the lookout for people or characters everywhere you go? 
It's terrible. I, I'm a people watcher, so I watch, uh, I'll go to places and I'll just sit there and watch people and I'll see somebody with a great look and I'll be like, God, I wish that was an actor, you know, or, or you know, some, some look I don't have, you know, either, you know, it's so funny because I see the, I notice the most odd people and it's not really about just good looking people, it's about different types, different looks, different things. And, and especially if you're working on a project that you're really having a hard time finding somebody for, and you see somebody walking down the street who looks perfect, you wish you could just go walk up to them and they would be a great actor, but that doesn't usually happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were a casting director for Hereditary. Can you talk a little bit about it? Wow, that was a hard movie to cast. <laughs> um, there, there was, so there were, so to be very, very clear, I did the local Utah casting of it. There was, an, uh, there was a New York casting director as well who was working on it. So I did not get the main leads. I got a lot of the, the weird, creepy people all through the whole thing. Um, and Ari was, he was a very specific, he knew what he wanted. And the director knew what he wanted. It was just really hard to find. And so it was, it, was, it, was, it was fun to cast because you get to see a lot of people do a lot of crazy things. But it was, uh, it was also difficult to cast because the director was very specific. But as you can see in the movie, he knew what he wanted. He got it. It's a freaky great movie. <laughs> so. You are a casting director on Yellowstone. What has that experience been like? Well, Yellowstone's awesome. It's one of my favorite things to cast. I mean, we get cowboys and different types of people into my office all the time, and, and it's fun. And we get to do the smaller parts where people get beat up or killed or shot, or you know what I mean? So it's a lot of fun to cast that. Um, it has actually been one of my, the most fun shows to cast for me. We're running out of cowboys in the state, but we'll find more. <laughs> so, but it's, it's been great, and, it, and it's consistency. And I, I'm, I've only done a few series. I, you know, I've only done, this is probably my sixth, Yellowstone was like my sixth series, seventh series. And, um, and so it's, it's interesting because, you know, with a movie, you cast, you're casting just for the movie, so you don't have to worry about the next episodes or something coming up or everything else. So in, in, a, in a series, you have to actually worry about, you know, wait, I'm gonna have more enough, is this actor good for this role or is there gonna be a better role or a bigger role or a, a different role for them later on in the series? So you have to kind of think about that. And then once you shoot them, that's who they are. You can't, you can't change them. That's, they are that character. So, and it's been great to see some of the actors, the local actors actually have recurring roles on the, sh on the series and be able to play it straight through and stuff. It's been really great for that, yeah. so yeah. How important are relationships in your position? Well, I think relationships in general in the film industry and in most industries are really important. Um, I think actors, for actors, you know, you, you start out, you know, most people start out in high school and they go to college and they get some training in college and then they're doing film shorts for directors in college. And they don't realize that those directors are gonna be people who give them jobs later on. And those relationships start. I mean, I get a lot of directors that come out of USC they're doing like their third or fourth movie out here. And they'll give me a list of actors they know in LA that they wanna work with because they did their shorts at USC. They, they did work for them for free. They're trying to help each other out. And I do believe that relationships are that important. I think that most of my jobs nowadays come from the last jobs I did. Um, so everybody kinda, you know, hopefully, I did a good job and people are saying, hey, um, we you know, hired Jeff Johnson as a casting director because he did a great job on our film. So that somebody coming back in, the different film, will call that producer and say, who did you use? And I think that's really how the business works in this, that kind of relationship sense. It's not that the director knows that that actor is the absolute best actor, but they know and trust that actor and they know that they can give them what they need. And so, for an actor, it's about getting trust. And that's as casting director, we find actors that we just trust. Like I can list actors that I can just put on a set and I know they're gonna do a great job and I know this, the, the people are gonna be really happy with them. Right. So it, it is about relationships in a way. How critical are film incentives for the survival of film in Utah? Very, very. Um, I have producer friends that I've worked with over years and stuff, and they love shooting here. And a lot of times they can't come in because there isn't enough incentive, or they, ha you know, or they, they you know, they're, they're out of the incentives for that period of time, whatever it is. But that's literally what all producers are looking at right now before they go somewhere. 
I mean, yeah, they're going to look at locations, they're going to look at studio space, they're going to look at everything else and crew base and, and talent base and everything else, but their, their main thing is, okay, so where can I get the most bang for my buck? And so they are literally looking at the tax incentives and saying, we can go here or here or here. And that, that usually comes, especially if it's a studio piece, uh, it's coming from way up. It's not even, the producers don't have a choice. I get so many producers that come call me up and said, I'm so sick and I won't say where, that I'm so sick of shooting here that I want to be somewhere else. So can we do anything about that? So it happens a lot. So yeah, it's, I think it's the number one thing people look at right now to where to put a film is tax incentives at this point. Casting directors, associates, and agents. Can you explain the differences? There's casting directors, casting associates, casting, you know, and then there's agents, all right? And talent agent actually represents the actor. They, um, they are basically, they don't get paid unless the actor works. So they take on the best actors they can find and they represent them and say, hey, I'm gonna help you get auditions, I'm gonna help you get out and I'm gonna help negotiate a contract, make sure you're protected, make sure you don't get ripped off. I work for the production side. So I'm hired for the production to find the best actors for the production. So my job is actually, I work with agents. I call up agents and say, hey, I'm looking for this, give me some suggestions. Um, so they send me ideas and, and try to get their people in with me. So I, I don't, and my job is actually to protect the production. So my job is to make the offers the production wants and then we negotiate and work it out. So it's not, I do not represent people. It would be a, a conflict of interest for me to represent anybody. So, yeah.